Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to generate a circular movement in the Cartesian space using the Mian robot and Copelesim. And for this we are following a, a, or we are based in, in the videos that we have seen before to, in order to describe a coordinate axis movement, a point to point movement and also linear movement. But now we are interested in reproducing the move C instruction that we have in Rapid for ABD robots. Uh, for that instruction we need uh, three points at least in order to generate um, a circle or an arc segment actually. Uh, the first point is the actual robot position and then the second point is the intermediate uh, position of, uh, the, of that trajectory and the, the last point will be the actual end point that we want for that trajectory. Okay? In this example I'm going to that I'm going to explain we have two trajectories one which is moving in the xy plane here of the global reference frame is that one here and then I have another trajectory here moving in the xz plane of this global frame here as you can see but the maths I'm about to explain actually are valid for generating points in the 3D space of, uh, of the Cartesian space but with the only condition that uh, at least the circle is not degenerated let's say for instance that the three points are aligned, uh, in that case the radius will be infinite and then we cannot compute that circle, okay? But apart from that, uh, let's say singular uh, cases, uh, the code I'm about to explain will be valid for any circle or arc segment uh, contained in a plane in, um, in, a, in, the, in the Cartesian space, okay? So, uh, first thing I would like to also mention is that we are going to, as I said, uh, generate two trajectories, for each of the trajectories in order to compute that circle I will need to compute a transformation matrix or reference frame that will be associated to the first point of each trajectory, in that case the first trajectory will have a reference point here, uh, sorry a reference frame here and then the second trajectory since its initial point is that one then it, it will have another reference frame associated to that uh, uh, plane that the points are contained, okay? So let's take a look to the, um, to the code we have here. It's uh, quite a lot of code but uh, you will see that um, with the maths, all, behind, all, all the maths that I have explained in the, in the document that is included in the video description then you will be able to follow uh, this uh, video, okay? Well first thing is uh, uh, exactly the same as before, we have some, uh, in this case, some uh, uh, or we're getting the handles of some of the joints in order to get the dimensions of the robot and everything like that. We again set, sorry, uh, we again set a four specific positions I would like to uh, go. In that case, these first two points uh, together with initial configuration uh, perform the first circle trajectory and these three points here are actually are the, the one that will perform the second uh, circular trajectory. Okay? Uh, in that case I have implemented a compute trajectory circle that I need an uh, initial configuration and then the sequence of points that I would like to generate. But this is taken by pairs so that this one here it's taken by pairs with these two and then the last configuration that will be associated to this position here will be uh, combined with these other two uh, positions here so that we have these two trajectories as I will mention. As, as I was mentioned, and here we have the time that I spend on each of these two trajectories, okay? So, uh, well, uh, let's see how... Yeah, here it is... Uh, wait a moment, yeah, there it is, okay. So, for this, uh, uh, this computes a trajectory circle, what I have is I call another function which is called move c, as I said before, this is emulating the uh, move C instruction in the rapid language that requires initial configuration and two points, the intermediate point and the final point, and the time I want to spend to generate that trajectory. Okay? As I said, I take that in pairs, so I need two points here, and then in order to combine more uh, circular trajectories, then I need to generate uh, or to compute the inverse kinematic using the last or the previous point in order to compute the initial configuration 
and then I use the PI and PI plus one points in order to generate that uh, sequence of uh, trajectories, okay? Take a look, or just take into consideration that here the for loop increases by two, okay? So that's why the I increases by two, okay? Well, let's take a look to the move C instruction here. It's somewhere here, here it is, okay? Uh, well, this instruction here, basically, uh, it's uh, just computing uh, the actual trajectory that we need to move from our initial configuration uh, to reach the final uh, position that we want, but for that we need an intermediate position, okay? Uh, in that case, what I need to do is first I need to compute the position in Cartesian coordinates of my actual initial configuration, okay? So that's PT0. And then with these three points, I fit a circle in the 3D space, okay? This is a function that has a maths behind, I will explain it, briefly explain it here, okay, but as I said, it's explained in the document, including the video description, that provides a transformation matrix that it's associated to the first point, in, so that the other two points are contained in the xy plane of this transformation matrix, okay? Because they are contained in the xy plane, then they can be seen as a circle in the 2D uh, in a 2D dimension with respect to that transformation frame, okay? That's uh, the key point here. And that actually is the center of the circle in that uh, relative frame and the radius as well as the initial angle and the final angle in order to the, go from the initial configuration to the final point in this case, okay? There are two possible solutions, so we discard, uh, we always choose or try to choose the shortest one, okay, because uh, that's why uh, uh, we, using the PT1, we know one which is the correct solution in this case, okay? Okay, so let's say, or let's assume that we have the parameters for that circle, okay, and then the cubic trajectory here, it's been performed in the angular coordinate in which I move, uh, or I, I describe, or I sweep this circle here, so that I have a cubic trajectory from the initial angle to the final angle with respect to, as I said, this arc segment, okay? And that will provide some trajectory parameters that I evaluate here in this for loop, okay? This will give me the actual angle as time it's uh, moving and passing through, um, so that on every time I compute as you can see here, this part here, I just simply compute the equation of a circle in which I have the radius, the cosinus of the angle, and I add the x coordinate in this case, the y coordinate in this case, and the z coordinate is zero because it's contained, this point here, is relative to the uh, transformation frame I was mentioned, and for that reason, I use this transformation frame so that I convert this point into the Cartesian space with respect to the world frame, okay? That's a point with respect to the world frame. So once we have the point A with respect to the world frame, then we can use the inverse kinematics to compute the actual angles of the first three joints of the robot so that we can uh, move from the initial configuration pass by uh, the in intermediate point and then reach the final point, okay? Well, let me just uh, briefly explain how this fit circle function works. Is this function here is basically computing two vectors with respect to uh, PT0, so the vector PT1 minus PT0 and PT2 minus PT0, and it's computing, uh, in this case, x, y, and z axis of a reference frame so that the first axis, the x axis, points towards PT1, okay? The second one, it's the cross product between PT01 and PT02, and then the y axis is just simply the cross product uh, because it's a dextro rotary uh, reference frame, and then once we have the z and the x, we can compute y, okay? With that, we build a transformation matrix, this is a function, these are some 
auxiliary functions that I explained just before here, but we built a transformation matrix and with that we do some math in order to compute now the points will can be projected over the x y plane of this uh, reference frame and then we can compute the standard maths for the circle radius and, uh, and the initial angle and final angle for this circle in the, contain in the 2D plane of the xy reference frame here, ok? Well these actually uh, functions I mentioned here, they are just right here, just to compute the vector difference, the norm of a vector, uh, the unitary uh, vector uh, from a generic vector, uh, the cross product, the dot product, or to build a transformation matrix, ok? And these are some auxiliary functions that I need in order to succeed for this example, ok? Well, let's see how it works. Uh, it's hard to appreciate, but at the beginning, since it still is a cubic trajectory, it will start uh, with a slow displacement here, then will speed up a little bit and then slow down here, ok? Here, this is how it works. Now it's, the speed is increasing and then the speed is decreasing and then it's moving in the y, sorry, in the xz plane as you can see there, ok? Ok, I hope you could see it. Thank you very much.